Bill O'Flaherty seems to be a little forgotten man. I mean, my experience of him in the last two years was the bigger the game, the better he got, you know, in the county final against Mike Holland two years ago. And, and again, he had a massive game. So, you know, he is a young player with great potential. The Maroon and White Pod brought to you by CityLink. For bookings, timetables, updates and any other information, head to citylink.ie. So a narrow win for Goa against Tyrone and Oma, where they ran out winners on a scoreline of 110 to 12 points. Three points after three games, the exact same position as last year and a badly needed win for Goa. Coming to you first, Mike. Just really important to get the win first, no matter what else. 100%, yeah. I suppose getting, getting the two points was massive. Um, it was always going to be a big ask. I suppose going to, to Tyrone, even though Galway probably had the upper hand on them throughout the league campaign over the last couple of years or so. Um, yeah, massive two points, and I suppose there's three points on the board now. Um, they have a, a, big, a big challenge in, in Derry next weekend as well, so they, they really needed it. You know, it was, um, yeah, more than two points. Yeah, Barry, just similar to that, important to win this, even when you were looking towards the end, it was kind of slipping away, but just important to come out of here. Um, <clears throat> yeah, on, at an overall level, yeah, absolutely. But I suppose for Porrick and management teams, and Michael know this as well, like they're looking for a bit more than what we're looking for in that, you know, supporters and pundits and all of that always get very focused and, and caught up on the result and you know, did they win, did they lose and where they are on the table, but they'll have been looking for other stuff in relation to, like, from what I could have seen, so I think we can take the Mayo game as a bit of an outlier to a certain extent, well, we'd hope we can, but, like, the Roscommon game, the quality wasn't great, but, like, they battled and they worked and they had a great attitude and they put in a really good shift and they did the same today and, and what, like, you know, they won by a point, but like, does it change if they lost by a point? Okay, they didn't, they wouldn't have got the two points, yes. but in overall context of the year, does it change a huge amount? Probably not. They're still looking for the same things. And I think they got them today and they got them against Roscommon. And it's a very good sign of, of, of a group of players that are, they are back in management and what management want to do. And I think that's for us as, as supporters and, you know, lads chatting about a game. The win and the points are important, but for Porrick and Scan and Devo and the boys going down the road, they will have been looking at other stuff. And I'd say that other stuff, they'd have been very pleased with it as well. What stood out most today for you, Mike? What were you most impressed by after kind of a few hours now since the game? Um, the standouts was probably the likes of Paul Conroy kind of demanding the, the middle um, for the first probably 20 minutes or so. Um, his pop passes inside to, to Rob Finnerty. I thought Rob was savage for the first first half. Um, you know, he, he clocked up some serious scores, but, but probably a weakness in, in, in Rob's game maybe over the last couple of years is making that ball stick inside. You know, he's usually that player coming off the shoulder um, and he's a serious striker of ball. If you give him, give him any time and space, he's going to strike it. Um, what he was doing today and receiving... You know, tough ball. The first ball that was put into him was Kieran Malloy. Um, you know, probably wasn't the best ball and made it stick and he put it over from a tight angle. So um I think we kind of went at it a small bit more. I said John Daly was playing with his head up, you know, looking for that pop ball inside to, to lean up and I think he won um uh, two if not three three balls early on, probably faded out of it after that to a certain extent. Um but it's it's like that. They're trying to feed in new players and um, O'Corrine inside as well probably didn't get his hand on as much ball and you'll probably find that with inside forwards anyway when you're playing against the likes of the Tyrone who kind of just sit back and, and give you possession around the middle um, yeah I think the likes of Paul Conroy I think was good I thought John, Ma- John Maher was very good in the field um, he's kind of introduced himself into that midfield area and look, he wants to make it his own I think Billy McDade probably coming in looking uh, over the next couple of weeks, so it's putting a bit of pressure on. And like that, everyone's kind of building, and there's a lot of injuries at the minute. Um, so I think going to Tyrone and getting getting that result with the amount of injuries they have at the minute was was, was very good. I think management will have to be proud of that, and we're I think we're definitely happy with it as, as supporters. 
Just one thing you mentioned there, Mike, going at it. Is one thing that this Galway team are maybe just guilty at the moment. There were stages today in the first half when we turned over the ball and we looked to go laterally rather than just keep passing that ball, not letting Tyrone set up. Yeah, I think we probably went away from it a small bit. You know, we did it quite early and we were getting good joy from it, you know. Um, the ball was sticking inside when it was put in. Um, I don't know, did Tyrone just set up that bit quicker and, you know, we didn't try to penetrate it because there was that gap inside, you know, around that, that D area. Um, and all it takes at times is just that simple pop ball and there's plenty of lads to be coming off the shoulder to a very hard to stop a runner who gets a run on their, their, their man. Um, it's either a score or a free, you know, you're creating chances. Um, it probably went away from it a small bit, particularly in the second half when Paul Connolly went off. Uh, and look at Paul, I know you've, you've kind of gone on about him over the last couple of weeks. He's, he's a massive um, addition to the, to the Galway setup. You know, um, he's been you know, such a servant for Galway over the last couple of years. And what he does, you know, wins frees, kicks scores. Um, he's so innovative around the middle. Um, and I think the likes of the John Maher probably compliments him as well, and he puts in that, that massive work right around him. So, um, yeah, probably went away from it a small bit in, in the second half, unfortunately, when he, when he went off. Yeah, because Barry, especially early on, after 14 minutes, it was 4 2 up. And as Mike was mentioning there, Robert Finnerty was going really well. It was, a, it was a real positive. We were kicking ball, things were going well. But just kind of after that period, then. Tyrone obviously going ahead of the breaks, 6-4, and we just seemed to go away from kick-passing that ball and maybe going lateral, maybe taking too much out of the ball at times. Yeah, I think I suppose starting with Rob, it was, it was great to see him back, showing, showing a bit of form, and he, and he has struggled with injury over the last the last while, and he's a fella that, you know, I, I worked with him at under 21, and you could see, and Mike, you'll have played against him, I'd say, I'm sure, a lot of times, and, and he has he has something different that that a lot of footballers don't have, and that just so good on the ball, you know, mightn't have that light and burst of pace. But what he can do is he he can he can shift away from a fella in that ten fifteen yard space, and his feet are very good. But you know, I would have felt and and like he, he I'm not sure if he listens if he's a, a regular listen to this, but like he you felt at times he could do give him a bit of a kick in the backside, like because he. He's so good that he needs to be one of the dominant forwards in that caller team because whatever happens with Shane or Damien over the next year, two, three years, both of them are 30 years old. And, you know, Paul Conroy is kind of booking the trend in terms of players of that age, you know, producing at an inter county level. Once you go past 30, unfortunately, you know, you're, you're definitely in the twilight of your career and Galway needs someone to step up. and that, that to me has to be Rob Finnerty. Um, I, I agree with you in terms of like we started to go a bit lateral. I also thought on the opposite side of that, I, I thought we we retreated a little bit from Tyrone and that when Tyrone got a turnover, instead of trying to put a squeeze on, and I think again that comes a lot from Paul and that he's so vocal and he's always trying to get on the front foot. We we did went back into a little bit of what we've a habit of doing of kind of pointing and dropping off and they kind of picked their way through was a little bit easier and particularly uh, when they but just when you're talking about that like did did they get two or three marks in the first half just from us dropping off yeah that 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 was my perception of it anyway. know I, I was only watching it on telly I just felt that in the first twenty minutes we really squeezed and we really went at them and as I thought yeah. Uh, Offensively, we we slow things down a bit, but I just thought defensively, particularly up top, that that we didn't put a squeeze on quick enough, and and they picked their way through a little bit. And I felt, and I would feel that a you know better teams at times we 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 continue to do that in the second half, and and they kind of ran down blind alleys to a certain extent. Um, and better that was something that would worry me a little bit. Um, that better teams might pick us off or pick scores off. Um, a little bit easier than than what Tyrone did, but like again, that's something that they'll have, that goal, the goal management will see, and I'm sure I'm sure they'll address over the over the next week or two. Yeah, I think you made a good point there, and you know, lads need to be standing up when the likes of Dane and Comer and Shane Walsh are missing. You know, they've obviously carried the, the forwards, you know, for, for for many years, and they're they're massive losses throughout the league. 
I was kind of I was somewhat disappointed with the likes of Matty Tierney in the first half and even you know Johnny Heaney while he got man the match and had a massive second half. He was, you know he worked hard at that you know on, on that wing forward position, but he probably needs to be popping up with some scores or, or you know creating something offensively as well and putting him on the back foot. And then they came out in the second half and they just went at it. You know Matthew Tierney caught the half ball and just went for it um, and got the first score and then Johnny Heaney followed. So. Whatever was said at half time, it obviously gave them that bit of motivation to go at it. Um, but yeah, that's what we need. We need more lads kind of standing up to the mark with the, with the boys missing. Um, I don't know how far off they are from, from you know, featuring or will they feature in the league or at the latter stages of it. Um, it would be good to get them some game time before the championship kicks off as well. Just on that, Barry, because you're talking on the point there of Robert Finnerty, really good in the first half. Do you think if we're going to have a good year and push on this year, does Robert Finnerty have to be one of the main men this year? Uh, on, a, on, a, on a personal opinion, I think, yeah. Like, you know, one of the positives for me from today and over the last the, the National League has been the introduction of, of the likes of Killian O'Corrin and Liam O'Connell and these guys, but they're still very young and they're still trying to find their feet at senior in the county football and and it's like it's it's an extreme it's not an easy experience and it's not easy to do it and you know they will they're very good very good footballers and they've showed it in Sigerson and it'll take them a bit of time to to get to that level Rob has a plenty of experience now and he's probably 26 I'd say 27 so again He's at the peak, 25, 26, 27, around that age. He's at the peak of his powers now, and he needs to go and produce it because he has all the ability to do it. And if Galway are to go, because there's a lot of this, to be honest, bullshit really about, you know, when we get Shane and Damien on the pitch and Boko, like the reality is both absolutely outstanding footballers. And and 20, when we get to the Ireland final, 2022 yeah. had two great years. That That's an outlier. Like, you could probably you wouldn't count too many games over the last five years where we've had Shane Walsh and Damien Comer on the same pitch both playing really really well. So you know to talk some of the the soft talk out there about you know the anticipation of just getting the two boys back and and it'll take all of it from there. That that that's exactly what it is a soft talk and and we're going to need Rob Finnerty and and again when we spoke about giving a guy a kick in the backside at times, you know, we're going to need Matthew Tierney as well because, like, when he does it, and I think he, he personally, I, I would have him, uh, I would look at him at midfield, but that's only only me. I think he needs to be involved in the game all the time and really driving this thing forward because he's, he's an exceptional footballer, sometimes drifts in and drifts out of games, but has all the attributes to go and uh, to go and be the dominant footballer on the Galway team. As Barry mentions there about Matthew Tierney, Mike, it's it's not positive in one sense. The likelihood is Matthew Tierney is probably going to miss a few games now, just with a quick turnaround and the injury. But really, in that second half, he was he was coming to the fore, where you're seeing more of what Matthew is about. Yeah, he was, and he was dominating, you know, and you know, he he laid the marker right from the throw in, which was class. Because I was I was looking looking for him today, uh, particularly because he was playing in that eleven role. Um, and probably I don't know does that 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 position suit him? Um, like Barry was saying, maybe he's better uh, out around the middle where he's getting involved in play. Um, because you can kind of switch off in that eleven position because you can decide if you want to make that run or not. Um, it probably didn't suit him the way that we're playing. We we kind of carry the ball a small bit more than than kick it, particularly from the half back line to to midfield section. We just kind of do that out ball. Um. So yeah, he's um, it's unfortunate that he, even the, the freeze that, that he would have missed, like maybe it's the fact that he wasn't um, on them regular or frequently. I know he missed a lot of even the, the club year this year, and that um, but, you know in previous years you'd be expecting to slap them all day long. Uh, and you know I think the camera went to Park and sideline at one stage, and I'd say he was just disgusted at the fact that you know, he surely kick it a few in that position. So I think it was free. Uh, three easy scoreable frees um, that could have kind of solved the game that small bit earlier. So, yeah, it's, um, it's unfortunate that he's injured. It sounded like a hip flexor injury similar to, to Shane Walsh's. Um, so, look, I don't know how long that could be. 
What's Matthew's best position for you, Mike? It's a, it's a tricky one. I know he's played a good bit of at wing forward. He kind of gives that option, that, that aerial threat at wing forward as well. Um, he's ferocious pace. But I suppose it depends on who you're playing midfield with him. You know, if you're playing the likes of a Paul Conroy, he might be a similar type player to Paul Conroy. Um, you know, Paul has to play at the minute. Will he last the 70 minutes? Come in the thick of it against the carrier Dublin and Croker, it's it's hard to know. Um, is he better to come on, let's say the last 15, 20 minutes to see out the game? You know what a lad to bring off the bench. Um, so it it's hard to know. Probably, I yeah, know he's played inside inside forward as well um, in that 13 position. He's played a bit of full forward, but you'd probably have to try him out around the middle. But, Again, you probably won't be trying out Anthony now at this stage because he'll be doing well to, to get back into the, the end of the league, will he? Yeah, for sure. And we're, like we're just referencing, it was 6 4 at the break. We come out, we get those two quick points from Matthew and Johnny Heaney, 6 6. What would, what did we do? Was it just simply there, Barry? We went at them more, we threw off the shackles. What do we do to come out, I suppose, on the front foot after halftime? Um, well, I will say, in fairness to Porrick, over his tenure as goal manager, that 10 minutes after half time has tended to be strong. You know, I, I think he gets his messaging uh, right, and I think he gets the tone of his messaging right at half time. And, and we tend to come out fairly sharp in the second half. Now, at times, we have a tendency then to, to drift off, which, which, isn't, which, isn't exactly, uh, which isn't exactly ideal. But I think like uh, there's that bit of momentum as well in that that first score is so important because it allows you to put a squeeze then on their kick out and set restarts now in Gaelic football are so so important and um, you know Galway got score straight away put a pressure on Niall Morgan they got a squeeze on got a turnover and Johnny Heaney kicked his score so th- there's there's not like I- I'd be nearly more worried that we didn't go after Try to get seven six a, a little bit quicker. I, I I thought we kind of went to six all and and kind of again just took the took our foot off it a small bit and and you would just feel that if we can get to a level where we can push and push and that's like the, that's why we can't rely on Paul all the time to be there to do that. Like it has to be a case of we get to six all like we gotta particularly and and no disrespect to Tyrone but like they're not going well like they're not. You know, they're not the team that went to one in all Ireland. Like they were, Galway Parry Joyce has a hundred percent record against Tyrone in the league, and like I've seen them in the tomb a couple of times over the last year, couple of years, and they've been very poor. And to be honest, they're in transition, but, really, aren't they? Oh, I don't know what they're in. To be honest, Paul, <laughs> I think that's I think that's that's been very very kind to them. Um, you know, there were a lot of lads out there that won all Ireland medals not that long ago. So, you know, what do you transition to? Rory Canavan, Dara Canavan, excellent footballers. Paul Campsey, good footballer. I think the discipline at times let them down a little bit, but but we'll stick with Galway. I said I just I think we had an opportunity against the team that we to really put their foot put our foot in their throat, and, and I'd just be dis- a bit disappointed we didn't. I said loads of positives from from today, but if you're looking for stuff that maybe would disappoint you a little bit, I think that that certainly would be one of them. The big turning point really is. Mike, Tyrone go 8-6, but the way Daniel O'Flaherty works the ball, then it's given to Rory Cunningham. He offloads it at the perfect time. Sweeney comes in and he probably has been in those situations before and hasn't finished the goals, but that was a huge turning point to get that goal to go ahead. Yeah, I thought it was it was a, a brilliant kind of substitute, really, by by Porrick. And, you know, Kieran probably, while he popped ball in the first half and, you know, had a shot at goal, uh, or shot for a point um, that went nearly wide. Um, probably went away from the small bit and we didn't kind of see that out of him um, later on this, in the in the first half. With Daniel coming in, he injected serious pace to it. You know, he kicked his own score and then, as you, as you mentioned, it was a vital goal. Um, but it was a purely that, that pace, the injection pace that he brought to the attack and um, that pop ball into and Rory Cunningham making a stick you know, really slick inside forward. If he can get ball into him at all, um, 
he make a stick and he'll do the damage. He's done it. He does it year in, year out for the club. He's a quality player. Um, Sweeney, serious finish. You know, that was that was the that was the turning point really. Um, I know he had another one after that, probably a small bit tighter angle. Um, but look at he's getting into those positions and quality finish. Just uh, Rory Cunningham, you talked about him being a quality player. We've seen him do for Brendan's in every game this year. Is he someone you feel that can get game time as the year progresses? I think so. I think he's he's kind of earned his right to, to be there. Um, I think he's filled out quite a bit over the last year or so. Um, you know, he's, 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 he's the jersey's getting that bit tighter on him. Um, look at he's he should be kind of getting more more game time maybe in the last fifteen minutes, hopefully against Derry or so, and start easing into the game like that. Um, but yeah, he should because he's very slick. You know, as you, as you mentioned there, he's done it for for St. Burns for many years and it's like, I saw a couple of their games this year and he's a top quality forward. You get the ball into him at all, he'll do damage, you know, so it's trying to feed him through and, and bring him along in that goal jersey. Well, Flaherty's impact in Barry, I suppose for the period he was on, he's probably nearly in contention for man of the match because he just made a huge impact for goal today. Yeah, he did and he's great pace and he's been playing really, really well for Sotil. Um, and um, showed huge confidence, like you know, pass not pass. You know, I'm sure he was his confidence and his own ability. But the score he got, certainly he would have been forgiven for taking it on a little bit more and maybe popping it to a, a Rory Cunningham or someone maybe an an noted finisher. But like you know, when when Goller really needed a score, he came up with it. And I thought he was he was really good. He's 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 aggressive and he's strong. He's a really good runner and he's good on the ball. But like Carl Sweeney, I saw him for Sawtill a good few, good few games last year, and I said it a couple of times that that if there was one player putting his hand up in Galway Club Championship to say, look, I'm I'm going to lead this Galway thing, it was him. I thought he was absolutely outstanding last year in the Club Championship, and I think he's a player that that could could go and do very very good things for Galway. I think he's um, I think he's a top player. I think he's ever pace good in the tackle, can finish. And I know Parry did mention it in, in comments afterwards that, that that goal scoring has been something they've been working on. And he referenced that he did have another chance that he that he could have uh, he could have finished as well. So I think he's um he's a top player and, and can only get better. And just someone someone who I think we we've haven't mentioned or maybe we will mention that that I think deserves huge credit as well. And I I, I love watching him play is Johnny McGrath. Um, like uh, watching Gaelic football, what we love is that, like you know, it's a game, g- g- great game. We love it, but it's the competitive nature of it. And if anyone epitomizes what it means to be competitive in Gaelic football, it's Johnny McGrath. Like he, he brings the fight all the time. He he attacks everything. He's getting his body on the line as a corner forward. If you're in that position, like he's always hands on, never stepping, never taking a backward step, and come up and kicked a great score and. Like again, you're looking for these leaders to be developed, and and you know without Jack Lynn, who was the, who was potentially putting himself in that position to be that leader of a Galway defence, Johnny McGrath has certainly stepped up, and uh, I th- I think he's he's uh, he's he's definitely the people's champion as well. They they like his style, and I think he's 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 a um, a brilliant addition to that Galway backline. Yeah, he's so Irish, you know. And if he's on cabinet today, kind of and he just Give him bags of it. Uh, I know Kevin had a tough couple of weeks in that, but that's the last man you'd want to be going in on top of, hands on consistently, and you know draining the energy out of you. I think there was a high ball kicked in the second half, and um, Kevin was through for possible goal chance, and he just got hands on, ball spilled. You know that was a dangerous, dangerous period in the game. Um, so he's really, he's really laying down a marker for for the championship um, starting thing. Is the biggest positive out of, out of today, it, it comes back there and it goes to 1-8 to 10 and then we stretch it out to 1-9 to 10 and then it goes 1-10 to 10. Is the biggest positive within that period, Barry, before it end, the way we were able to keep responding to Tyrone? 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and like <clears throat> if Galway, you know, the last couple of games, maybe the Galway particularly the old game, and then maybe the performance, not not the attitude or anything like that against Roscommon, but maybe the performance wasn't wasn't exactly or the quality wasn't exactly what we'd have anticipated. But you, every comment you make about you know positives or stuff, we can you have to keep in the back of your mind that we're missing. Jack Lynn, Young Footballer of the Year, Killian McDade, All Star, Damien Comer, Shane Walsh, both All Stars, like four top, and I'm sure I'm missing lads, I'm sure there's other lads missing, four absolutely outstanding footballers. So the biggest positive is, yeah, we're doing it, but we're doing it with new, younger, younger talent. And, and that's, that's the big thing. And, and you're trying, as I said, they're trying to develop these leaders. So the Johnny McGraths, the Kyle Sweeney's, the John Mahers, the Rob Finnerty's. The Killing O'Corrines, if he's there, the Limo Canales are trying to develop these guys that can go and play the, the you know, Rory Cunningham, these guys. That they're all that's the positive. So the on a on a at a micro level, yeah, great that we went and did that. But at a macro level, great that we didn't went and did that with newer, younger players. And and that's 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 as the management, as I said, the stuff that they're going to be looking at coming back down the road, that's it. And I will say one thing is that, the, you know, we're always first to jump on the bandwagon if there's to give out about county boards or whatever the situation is. But someone is doing something very right in terms of S&C for these young fellas. Because, like, if you look at the likes of Johnny McGrath, the likes of Killian O'Curry, Limo Canela, like, they're coming onto this Galway senior team come in a fairly good shape. Yeah, they're still young and there's loads of room for development. Even Jack Lane, when he burst on the scene, they're coming in good, good shape. And whatever about mentally and, you know, ability-wise able to compete, which which they obviously have, the whole athletic side of it, being able to compete, they're doing it really, really well. And that's a credit to the, uh, to credit to everyone that's involved in developing these young footballers because, you know, it's not, it doesn't happen in every county. But it's certainly been very, very. It, it's certainly very noticeable with the Galway footballers. I would feel. Just a man that was key to that second half revival, Mike Johnny Heaney got some key scores. We've seen Johnny play that wing forward role really well, but probably haven't seen him chip in with scores as much as he did today. Is is that something we need to keep seeing from Johnny now moving forward? Yeah, most definitely. I was just kind of just jotting down notes as, as the game was going on today and. Um, they were the two players that were standing out, Johnny Heaney and and, and Matty Tierney, because you know, having been around the county scene it through different years and playing against them, you know, you know what they can do, uh, and they probably just didn't do enough for me in the first half. Um, but then when they went out of the second half, like Johnny is, you know, nailed himself onto that Galway Galway team with pure determination. You know, he's a pure professional. Um, serious scores, love the outside. Outside the right to, to, to finish it, um, top quality player. You know he works works like a dog, just stays going. He's he's as honest as they come. Um, yeah, we we needed we needed him to step up in the second half, and he did. He was key, Barry, wasn't he? Yeah, he's <clears throat> he's a vital cog to that call of team, and and look, the Mayo game didn't go well for him, but he had plenty of credit in the bank that he can he can fall back on because like I always say it, I think I remember one of Parik Joyce's first game in charge um, not his first but they went to Kerry to play Tralee just before COVID and Johnny Heaney was cornerback and like he has played cornerback, wing back, he chipped in a midfield, wing forward and has done it for Kevin Walsh has done it now for 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 um, for Parry Joyce and like just as as Mike said, like just a complete he's a great competitor, he's honest, his attitude is always a hundred percent, does makes very little mistakes. And I would say if, if if a manager tells Johnny Heaney to go and stand on his head in the corner, Johnny Heaney will go and stand on his head in the corner. He just he'll 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 play constantly for the team and you know there is no there's no selfishness in anything that he does and like whenever whenever Johnny Heaney decides to to hang up his boots, like he low goal with football nothing and like one of the great success stories in reality of of Kevin Walsh's kind of tenure when maybe um 
you know, he'd asked quite a number of a number of guys to to, to go into senior panels and, and there weren't it, it wasn't for them at the time. And Johnny Heaney, who probably hadn't been, you know, a standout minor or twenty one, but had gone really well with Kalan and, and and he went in and um you know just embraced embraced that inter county scene and, and has given given everything to Galway over the last ten years. The end of this game was frantic. Tyrone get those two scores at the end to bring it back to one ten to twelve. We give the ball back cheaply. Uh, Robert Finnerty at one stage, I think it was John Mayer as well. Um, but Tyrone just can't make it count. Then Kieran Daly has the opportunity to shoot, pops it back to Niall Morgan. Uh, Joe McQuillan uh, blows the final whistle, and like all Go- Galway supporters, we we're all delighted with that. But and then the opportunities we had with a couple of the frees, like. In one sense, Mike, did we make this harder on ourselves than it needed to be? At, at times, definitely. Um, you know, we kind of went away from the things that were working in the first half, you know, getting that ball inside. I don't know, was it just the fact that we were getting on top? I think it was 4-2, and then we started holding on to the ball a small bit more. Did we just think that um, it's going to be a low-scoring game against Tyrone? Just hold, hold the ball. And that's fine to certain periods of the game, but when you're getting joy... You know, you have to keep going at it um, and, you know, make hay. Um, so I think we just, at times, we kind of just go away from that. You know, you can see John Daly when he comes forward. He's a joy to watch. He, he doesn't even look at the ball uh, when he's taking a play. He's just head up, looking inside. You know, the quick passes that he puts in outside the left, um, they're the types of balls you want to see. You know, it's it's a joy to watch. Um it's fine trying to break down mass defences and that, but if you're kind of being patient with the play and, you know, this time you will have to go lateral um, as much now as I don't like it. <laughs> it's it's a part of the game now, but you always have to have a head up and likes of a John Daly and even Kier Malloy earlier in the first half. You know, that's what you want. Paul Connery consistently. Um, so, yeah, that's the kind of football that would go football. Call footballer should be, should be playing. And I think, or it's well aware that we got massive success in 22 and putting up a right battle to carry it to, to get back to that stage again. Just hanging on in the end, Barry, but ultimately it, it doesn't really matter at the end. I suppose when we brought that on ourselves, it was just about hanging on. Yeah, hanging on and, and showing character to hang on. And now look, we were delighted Joe McCullum blew the blew the blew the whistle, but if it was the other way around, yeah, I I'd say we could be here, there could be some choice words about him, but um, yeah, I I thought Daly should have pulled the trigger for Tyrone. I thought he I thought he kind of bottled it a little bit. Where you know on the flip side of that one, Daniel Flaherty had the chance to do it for for Galway. He was well able to pull it, and and there was no no issues with that. Um, but you made you made a couple of points like for looking for stuff to improve on. I thought we were cheap in possession um are giving away possession cheaply a couple of times and and again like that you all look at look at um look at Mayo last night like guarantee if David Clifford's in the same position we're we're done for. Um and that's just that's just it and, and that's what we'll have to learn and that's what they'll have to look at on Tuesday night when they're looking at the video is that that sort of stuff at the top level um isn't isn't acceptable and like there'll be no better man than Pori to point that out to them on Tuesday night. You know, uh, again, like uh, as I was watching his TG Cahar interview and he spoke about um, a couple of Rob Finnerty and Matthew Tierney's efforts in the first half and basically said there's, you know, they were in- inexcusable. And I say he'll be looking at Rob Finnerty and I think John Maher, as he said, towards the end of the game and and highlighting that and saying like that, that, that doesn't happen again. And the most important thing that they can take from that last few minutes is, but that doesn't happen again if they if the same if they if they find themselves in the same position against Derry, which will be a much much tougher nut to crack. Yeah, Derry coming up now, and as Porker's reference in, in his interview, they're the most informed team in the country at the minute. How big is this challenge now, Mike? Because we're probably going deeper into our squad because it looks unlikely if, if Tierney or Connor are going to be fit for next weekend. With the with the impact some of the lads made, they might start, but we are probably going to go deeper and see some faces against Derry that we mightn't expect it to at the start of the year. 
Yeah, and I was kind of trying to think about that. Is in you know, who'll step in for for Matt Tierney um, at eleven? Is there is there a suited eleven there at the minute? It's it's hard to know. You know, are they, are they going to go in with the likes of you know they were bringing on the likes of um, Daly today and and um, Carlos Ryan Darcy. So like, will they go? Will he go with them? It's hard to know. Will he, will he throw in some some new blood? I know there's, there's two Carafin lads there that probably haven't got got game time through. I, th- I think uh, what's his name, Jack McCabe, had got came on the last day and got the black hair, which is unfortunate. So it's hard to know how how far back in the in the, the panel he'll go. Um, Sean Kelly, it was great to see him back on the field today again. Is he able to to play 70 minutes? Probably not yet. No, they're going to give him a half or so. So hopefully he he'll be putting his hand up, pushing pushing lads again. It's a tough one, you know. There's there's doesn't sound like the likes of Shane Walsh and, and Damien Comer are going to be back anytime soon. Um, so they're probably in a tough predicament going up to, to Derry, who are, like you said, in form. Um, it would be a tough ask. Yeah, how big is this challenge going to be, Barry? Because more or less Derry are at full strength at the minute. Um, oh yeah, it won't be too bad. Um, it's going to be, yeah, it'll be monumental enough now, to be honest. Um, you know, they have their, their their full strength and they have guys who are probably, you know, up there, the top footballers in the country. Connor Glass um, is, is probably the biggest leader in the country. And like what he's doing for, you know, for Glenn and for Derry is, is phenomenal. And like he is our Paul Conroy, but probably actually has a bit of a better supporting cast around him at the minute. And like, you know, there was, I suppose... Uh, question marks over the Mickey Hart thing, which I found really, really funny. Like, you have a guy going in there that has one minor under 21 and three senior All Ireland's, which you could basically say three different teams in Tyrone, and yet people were questioning why Derry would want would want him. I think he has brought them on another level, just in terms of um, in terms of what they're doing. And yeah, Monaghan were down a lot of players at the weekend, but like they really, really took them apart and. Gall are going to have to. They're going to have to find something, find something special next Sunday because that the performance today won't be good enough. But they they have shown signs that they're go, they're willing to dig in, and that's going to be the most important thing. And um, you know, it's it, it's a really good test for them. As 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 Mike said, like it doesn't look like Shane and Damien are going to come back, and even at Sean Kelly, like the intensity that Derry play at. You know, there might be a little bit of if I was Porrick, a little bit in my head going, this mightn't be the game to get Sean Kelly back into this thing full at full throttle. And certainly, if Damien's hammer or Sean Ke- or Shane Welch's um, hip flexor are in any way doubtful, I'm not sure you throw them in against Derry. You might just, you know, you might just um, take this one on the chin if if that's the way it's if that's the way it's going to to transpire. But yeah, you're right. Um, this is a, this is an opportunity for a lot of lads that that maybe wouldn't have felt that they're going to see an awful lot of game time this this summer uh, or this this year, uh, particularly against the top teams, and they're going to have to perform. And you know, no, Porik or any of his management team or any of the players, any of the senior players, won't use you know the personnel available to them as an excuse if it doesn't go well. But it's also a huge opportunity to test themselves against one of the top teams and see see exactly where they are. You know, what I will say about about Porrick, and he always introduces such a positive mentality in around the dressing room. You know, he's he's such a I suppose a driven winner, and and what I found is he instills that belief within the group. Um, now whether that's enough to get over the line next weekend or not, we'll we'll soon see. But he'll definitely, along with the management team, will you know be be striving for for that extra two points next weekend. There's a funny kind of element here, Mike, because if the result doesn't go the way on Sunday, we're almost straight back into this relegation battle because if Roscommon were to beat Monaghan, they're on three points, Monaghan go on to two points. If Tyrone were to get a result, it just shows how tight this division is at the moment. Yeah, definitely. Um, look, no team wants to be to be relegated. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's a championship is what the management want. 
you know, it's, it's, it's Sam Maguire, it's, it's those pieces of silverware. And, you know, Dublin were relegated and they went on from the All-Ireland. So if, if anything, that may have helped them in, in some elements. Um, so it's it's a tricky one. Um, it's not, look, I wouldn't see it as the end of the world. You know, I know supporters might say, comments after the first two games, you know, what are management at or different, you know, keyboard warriors or whatever. Um, I think we just need to face reality. We're missing, you know, the spine of our team at the minute, you know, massive senior all-star players. Um, and, you know, let's say when Kerry were missing there, the Cliffords, you know, they felt it, you know, the two of them clocked nine points between them yesterday evening. So it's, um, yeah, I think people just need to, Relax a small bit. It's it's a long way to championship yet. You know, lads need to recover. As Barry was saying earlier, you're not going to be risking anyone. You know, in these games, you know, not with the, the caliber of players that that are due to come back. Um, look, I think it's it's a promising year. Lads are getting plenty of game time. You know, even the development squad coming into the the FBD and that you know, there's a lot of lads getting a chance to put their hand up. Um, two of them probably played yesterday in, in full forward line. And um, so it's it's great that they're kind of introducing new blood. Um, and look, hopefully it'll be a long year yet. Barry, presumably we're probably going to see a lot of the faces that came on today in the second half. Obviously, we don't know the Sean Kelly of 70 minutes in him yet, but the likes of it, Keane Darcy probably going to see him now, along with Rory Cunningham and Daniel O'Flaherty that we could see from the start now in this Derry game. Yeah, absolutely. Or you might see someone come from that development squad. Maybe someone like Anthony Lee, if he's if he's knocking around with them. I'm I'm not sure who's in the panel or who's not in the panel. But um, yeah, some of the guys that maybe didn't go great for today. So maybe Killing O'Curry might go to eleven. Um, Keen Darcy might start if Paul if Paul can. Keen Darcy might start with 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 John Maher. Um, in the in the middle of the pitch, which doesn't give us, I think what we struggled, what we struggled with, um, against Mayo was a lack of a lack of a kicking option around the middle of the pitch, and you know that's what not having Paul and maybe you know say Kieran Lyonetoff if he's injured, I I don't know, but he kicks the ball really well too, um, so I think that that could be could be an issue for us, but that guys are guys are going to have to they're going to come in, and and. It'll be familiar, familiar-ish faces that start the game, but I think, I think the backup, the backup, uh, the cavalry squad in terms of who'll come in if, if, if they need players, which they will, they could be unfamiliar faces, and I said it might be someone like Anthony Olai who, who, who I think could offer us something that might get the opportunity to, uh, because we, we, we have to take it that that the guys that are missing at the moment won't be back, um, so as I said, we're, we're, we're we're looking at our looking at our squad, and it's getting a bit threadbare. But as I said, it might give an opportunity to someone to come in and and, and make a name for themselves. Just on that, Barry, would you deploy runners in the half forward line on Sunday? Because you have a half forward line there of McKinless, McGrogan, and Doherty, and they're just e to Derry. Do you deploy even if you're looking at a half forward line like Heaney, Malloy, and Sweeney, who are all just able to being able to track those players. Um. Yeah, that's easier said than done, though. Now, like, you can't just say let's go out there on on Ethan Doherty or whatever, and and um expect that you're going to be able to track him up down the pitch. Like, he's going to lose lads, and so the most important thing is, yeah, you're going to have lads, you know, earmarked for 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 tagging guys. You'd hope that maybe that's something that they've learned that that they, they didn't get it fully right against um they didn't get it fully right against against um against Mayo in terms of Oma McLaughlin and stuff. But they'll definitely have learned from that, and they'll be saying, "Look, we need to tag these guys," but they'll also need to be able to shift guys across to cut off runs, and that's that's going to be the most important thing is defensively, like Derry are Derry are operating at a at a at a really high level, and they're. They're able to get space inside for Shane McGuigan and they're also able to get these strike runners that you're going to have to have guys tagging them. But when they slip, which they will, you got to have guys got to be clued in to make sure that they're cutting off space in behind as well to make sure that they're not getting good, easy, easy, um, 
easy shots, easy shots off, and that's that's going to be one of the most important things as well. Just on my, that, Mike, is there certain lads that just have to play when you're playing a team like Derry in the way they play? Um, yeah, I think you made a decent comment there, and you know, possibly trying Kira Malloy, you know, on the half forward line and tracking runners, you know, about 11, maybe at a wing forward position or something like that. Um, I think Daniel Flaherty, after coming on, he probably has secured that wing back position for next week. Um, yeah, look at we're probably looking at the likes of of, of Maher and and Darcy out the middle. And like we were saying, we're we're wearing tennis mobile out there. Um, it's fine setting up defensively, and I think that needs to be spot on. You know, particularly what we're coming up against. It's, it's it's not to forget about that offensive play as well, and how to move that ball and, and get that transition right. Um, Will we have enough in, in Darcy and, and Maher out the middle to do that? I don't think so. Um, who do you put out the middle? You know, do you put a Kieran Malloy out the middle and see, see what he's like? You know, I think he's strong enough. He's good in the air. Um, yeah, there's a, I think we, we'll see a couple of surprises next week um, in, in the, the team layout because just the way it's panning out, you know, we're changing things up for opposition. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they come up with. I think you know, one of the things that worries me a little bit is is like look I don't know how I actually don't know how Derry lined out against Monaghan and obviously don't know how they line out next week but they will if they were to play like if Emma if you were to look across the middle of Emma Bradley, Connor Glass and and um, Brendan Rogers, Brendan Rogers and 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 um, Ethan Doherty, like. If you're Conor Gleeson, you're looking out at that, you're going, oh, Jesus Christ, where do I where do I put this? And then you might have Orrin Lynch, Orrin Lynch um popping up that kind of right half back spot. So so one of the things I would do uh, I might might jump in on this one is if, if you Conor Gleason and goal and they decide to deploy Orrin Lynch that right half back spot, I personally this is only me now, I I would I would overload that side of the pitch with some of our Bigger guys, so the likes of Keen Darcy, if he's there, John Maher, um, Johnny Heaney, and I would get Conor Gleeson to land ball after ball down on top of Warren Lynch and get three or four guys jumping on him and making sure that, to be honest, making sure he does not want that ball coming down on top of him at any stage again because, uh, to me, at this stage, he's getting a free ride and that's trying to make it a bit difficult for him and I think that would be a good opportunity to say, look, let's, get a, let's do what Kevin used to do, get loads of bodies to one side of the pitch but let's see, does Oren Lynch like this ball dropping on his head? If you have Keen Darcy, John Maher, Johnny Heaney, and maybe one or two others coming and coming very, very strong and making sure that he knows that, that this isn't going to be an easy ride for him. So try and come up with maybe a couple of things that might make life that little bit more difficult for Derry. Yeah, I think you're, you're right, Barry, and that probably needs to go back to that, that Kevin Wall style in, you know, getting in that... that um, you call that flood zone or that square uh, and just land it down top because to be honest Gleason seems to be doing that anyway you know he seems to be going quite long and in fairness Galway got good success from from it today but that's coming up against a poor Tyrone team you know and I think we will get punished and you know Derry they will get on that counter attack and they'll be gone and um, you know our, our wing forwards it'll be just chasing game uh, if, if we're not you know swarming breaks so yeah, they, they definitely need to come up with something because you know just roofing it long, I don't think it's going to work against Jerry. Yeah, no, it's it's a huge task uh, on Sunday against Derry. Uh, just before uh, we do finish up, um, Barry, were Ballier watching your power rankings? <laughs> definitely weren't. <clears throat> definitely weren't watching the. Um... The, the abuse I was receiving on, on <laughs> online uh, following it and and uh, uh, no idea. <laughs> maybe the right maybe maybe you have a huge following down in down in on the way out to West Clare Paul. I'm not I'm not hundred percent sure, but so what they will be watching is your articles in the Limerick Leader over the next couple of weeks <laughs> and seeing how much your uh, how much you're writing Clare off in the Munster Championship. So uh, do that <laughs> at your do that at your peril anyway. But just on that, Barry, uh, I presume you're excited for the role and uh, everything going into Clare. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, opportunity like that doesn't doesn't come around too often. Um, you know, not without its difficulties. Um, there's obviously a huge football 
culture down there as well and, and of that Barry A panel to three or four on the Clare Senior panel and a couple under 21s and um, lots of them play obviously with Clan de Gard and Lissy Casey and all that sort of stuff so um, but nothing nothing known down there has, has over, hasn't has overcome in the past and, and, and obviously has some, some top top talent as well although lots of them which I'm sure is the same in every club all around the country lots lots of lots of players in, in Australia and, and it seems to be um, I'm not sure it's like in, in Monavair and Cora Finn, Mike, but there's like I know there's a lot of players all over the country that have that have decided that it's a good opportunity to go and travel and can't blame them. But I think that's something the split season it's really it's given you know if you if you're if you're in some clubs and you're knocked out of a championship by by the middle of September and you know that's not going to be seeing your championship again for another practically 10, 11 months. Then it's very, very, very difficult to make sure to try and keep keep lads at home, and that is one of the difficulties that definitely Ballier are facing, and I'm sure it's the same with lots of clubs around the country. Just on that, Mike Barry mentions there Curvin and Monave, and it was such an intriguing story that last year. But how was it for you to manage both clubs last year? I think today, obviously, where uh, you play courting in the semi-final and then you have to go and tug out after. How was that full experience for you? Uh, uh, look, it was class. I mean, the fact that we won both was, you couldn't you couldn't have pictured it and you couldn't imagine it. Um, yeah, it was top class. It was, a, it was a busy year, you know. I was delighted to be able to go back then because, to be honest, I nearly decided to, to step away because injuries were, were just killing me really um we go to three years or so um yeah went back i didn't even see a lot of the the, the league games for for Curfin, to be honest because we were doing bits of motivating nearly on the same day so it was unfortunate but you no know, i kind of found the hunger a small bit in, in going in with one of a kind of found the love for a, a small bit again and said you know what i'll give it give it another crack and, and see how it goes and thankfully the body held up <laughs> so um yeah, look, it was top class and it was a, a great bunch in one of as well that look at they bought into it. You know, we, we put in a what I think is a good structure there, but if it's not backed with commitment by the players, you're going nowhere and so they did it in abundance. But yeah, look it was it was a brilliant year. Might be time to pack it in now though. <laughs> <laughs> give the rest of us give the rest of us a chance for God's sake. <laughs> so I don't know. I might Hey, are you doing both again this year, Mike? Yeah, yeah, I'm glad it again. And what happens if Kerf and Monday? I hope they each other in the, in the, in the group. <laughs> in the stairs, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, one one highlight uh, last year, Mike, with the Monday. Bunce interview before the Kilmina game, I'm sure. <laughs> you surely brought that up over a cup of tea and a biscuit at, at the house some evening, did you? Do you know what? I didn't. Uh, <laughs> did, didn't even mention it. Um, I think there was there was enough kind of met of it as, as it was, so there was there was no need. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it, it was funny. I think it attracts it attracted a lot more people maybe to, to go to the game and you know be more involved in it. And everyone knows Bones. He's, he's a character, but. He's a look. He's a brilliant manager, and, and what he did for one of A and, and going back and taking the job was was top class. And I think it's it's a real success story for him and the success that he's had with one of A, you know, through junior, intermediate, and senior. So um, he's a he's a one of A happy man through and through. And yeah, it was it was a great crack. It was great banter when, when that interview came out. Um, yeah, it was a good crack. Can I just say? I'll just say this. I know we're. But on, on Bunty, right? And and I think he so sometimes you look at teams, particularly at inter county level, and you know um I'm actually not going to say what county I'm talking about here, but you know that they're training really hard and you know that that their setup is probably very, very good. But sometimes they look like they're training or the that they're prepared just just it looks like they don't actually know what they're actually training so hard for. And it, it actually takes someone like the likes of Bunty that comes in and actually can bring a group like mightn't be, you know, mightn't be a Mickey Hart or mightn't be a Jimmy Guinness, but is able to bring a group together that actually looks like they have an identity. And that's what Monavay did this year. And Bunty has done it previously with, 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 pre, with other teams. And, and like, I think sometimes 
that can be underestimated, that ability to bring a group of people together to create an identity that go and play for each other. Because to a certain extent, if you have the backing of a county board and unlimited amounts of money, you can put a setup in place that will, you'll say, well, sure, look, we have great stats guys and we've the best S and C and we've top coaches and we just don't know what, what's going wrong. But if you can't create an identity piece around that, um, you're kind of going nowhere. And, and like, as I said, Bunty is a, a brilliant example of someone that can go into a group, pull them together, get them all going in the one direction. And, 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 and it shows that that they want to go and play for him and for whatever their club is at the time as well. Yeah, spot on. And that's exactly what he does. He brings 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 the group together. Um, look, he's he's a very honest man. You know, he he tells us straight straight as it is. Um, but I think that was respected, and I, I think that worked well. And maybe it mightn't work well in, in different groups, but definitely in one of the Abbey. Um, you know, they're they're. They're, they're driven to the cause and they love sport, you know, and that was another challenge, you know, with the hurling, soccer, rugby, it was something that I hadn't experienced in the past, you know, because for a thing, we don't really do anything else other than play football and play a bit of soccer during the off season and that, so there was a, it was definitely a new challenge, it was new to me, but how he dealt with that was, was sad, you know, um, yeah, he's, he, he's a really good organiser, uh, man manager and I think that's that's maybe that's half the battle in, in management. Good stuff. Well, uh, it was a great story throughout last year, but that's all we do have time for on the podcast uh, for today. A massive thank you to Mike and Barry for coming on.